what would you say was one thing you learned in your first year that could be a good thing, bad thing, but what was one thing that you learned that you wish you knew? One thing that I learned that I wish I knew, uh, I wish I knew how cutthroat the, the game is. Um, I wish I knew because it goes strictly from a passion to a business. Yeah. And it's not, it is a game, but, but it's not a game. Um, some of these people, it's life or death for them, you know? Um, and it's not like an effect that I didn't take it seriously. It was just the way that the game was brought up over there compared to the situation or the environment that I was brought up in, you know, it's just two separate levels, two different, you know, worlds per se, I would say. And, and I just, you know, I, I, I thought about the situation and, you know, again, I think with this, if there were things that I could have or things that I knew that I, the things that I knew that I should have known before coming into it yeah. was just the level, how fast it was going to be, how strong the players are going to be, how, how much dedicated that, that you had. I mean, I, I, you picked that up right away. You, you, you have to. Do you think no. that was because at your club, I would assume you were the best player on the field? I've seen you. You're like speedy quick. So you were probably by far the fastest person on the pitch. So did you think maybe because you came from where you came from and you were the best player on the field and you were um, – that you thought it was going to be easier, but then you realized it was cutthroat? Or was it just the fact that you already knew it was going to be cutthroat? Yeah, it, it became – Again, like, and finally, yeah, you still, I was still let alone. I don't, I don't think my, of course, the speed and I still, I fast, but I think, I mean, even at the age of eight, 17, 18, when I was there, I, I was still one of the strongest players. Yeah. So it wasn't, I didn't have a problem like strength wise, but um, definitely the uh, the, the speed of play and the technicality that comes with, and again, it's all once, once all of that is settled once you're physically fit and you're technically fit you know it's all about the mind and there was a lot more of the game that I had to learn there was a lot more of the game that I know now that I didn't know beforehand like the mental um, also being, yeah, being where I was I also wish I knew the language you know I wish I, I played I signed in Austria so uh, if knowing the language of German would have been a lot easier. It, it probably would have helped me um, in, in a lot of areas where, you know, I um, probably have, you know, it just, it just slowed down the process of picking up some things, you know, like things get interpreted in different ways from people who are speaking, you know, a language that's close to mine. But um, other than that, though, you know, yeah, man, the, the language, the, the speed of play, the way it's played over there, you know, I I knew right away coming into it that that I was fit for this and I, I could do it. Um, again, I did think it wasn't it wasn't going to be as hard as it was. It did catch me by surprise, and a lot of the times, um, you know, you felt like, you know, I definitely felt the, like the guinea pig there. You know, I was, yeah. you know, the way that they're brought up and the way that they're developed there, it's it's intertwined or it's it's core it correlated with you know their education you know they can go to school for three hours and end up training and yeah you know, like five they, hours. yeah it's yeah. it's you know and then yeah and then they're doing it on their own but you know yeah so now that you've been in the game for a little while you've seen what it's like what are your plans for the future goals like what do you want them to be let's say My that all the sort of Stuff gets yeah, my goal is still, bro. I would love to represent my country. I love to play at the highest level. I want to. I would love to retire playing, you know, soccer. I would love to then go on and be able to to coach and train some of the best players in the world, or just you know, be a constant influence in the game because that's what the game is about. It's all about influencing the next generation. Single. Yeah, but innovating it, taking it to a whole new level. You know, it's there's so much. And again, it's interdisciplinary and it involves a lot of what's going on. It could intertwine about what's going on today. Either way, it's, it's, it's an influence 
and I, I want to pursue that. I, I want to be able to to give back. I think it's a center stage that's allowed me to see so much, and um, I want to continue to learn so much. You know what I mean? I think there's a lot that I don't know. What for you would you say would be the highest level? What's the level that you say I've made it? Well, I played. I've had some great trials and some great trainings, and to play at Hoffenheim second squad, second reserve team. I've played at Wolfsburg. In Germany. I've played at um, Vienna Rapid. Huh. And when I was there, even though you know those were lessons and experiences that I've had, because I've you know I was trying out for those clubs, but I did not make those clubs. I'm still young at the age, but I got great insight and just because at the time that those players or those coaches said no um does not mean it's a no for for me yeah um, Their opinion. and i knew that yeah i mean one of the teams actually hoffenheim was a little bit of a you know again you, some, some things just happen outside your control you mm -hmm. know um they, they brought me into the office they actually extended my my stay as well for for the trial mm -hmm. and they brought me into the office and they were looking to sign me but that same coach went ahead and signed for uh, Grutefurt, who got promoted from the fourth division to the third division. So he got the head coaching job from the second division of Hoffenheim. And I think that kind of, you know, when, once the coach changes, then, you know, the, this next coach coming in either you know, doesn't know you or doesn't see yeah, uh, some other things, that, you know, things change, you know, it was just the timing of which, but, um, Again, so I saw myself compete at those levels, and I definitely do believe I can play at, in, in the first division in, in Bundesliga. I really do believe that I can play at the highest level when it comes to being at a, at a world stage and, and to play in Champions League, and yeah, I, I believe in that. I, I, there's, I've seen myself play with some of these. Luckily, I've played with some, you know, some top players, and to this day, yeah, it's it's – it's it's still it's still there for me. That's good. I believe in you. I mean, <laughs> anything is possible. Anything's possible. Too, I didn't right? know you tried out for Hoffenheim or uh, Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg's Wol Wolfsburg is one of the best German teams. That's where Kevin De Bruyne came from, and Roberto Firmino came from uh, Hoffenheim before he went to Liverpool and blew up the world. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and exactly. And like from seeing Roberto. You know, you didn't think he was going to be where he's at today. He's you know, I was just, yeah. So the first, so when you when you when you enter, when you come out of the locker rooms, and there's the whole park is there. It's got a whole bunch of fields, like maybe twelve. And it's a great facility. Um, yeah. So the first field that you see is the first team, and then as you go down from one field to the next, it goes down by age group. So the, all the uh, academy and the first team's all there, yeah, and the academy yeah. players. Yeah, they sit in the stands and watch them play. So as we were going on the training, I, I saw them, saw them training. I did not know that. That is amazing. You saw Roberto Firmino, let alone played next to him, let alone tried out next to him. That's that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, in Wolfsburg. You said, um, you know, De Bruyne was. Yeah. He was coming back from a, a slight little, you know, injury I think involving his hamstring, and um. He was going to – we had a friendly game with the reserve team, and we were playing some team. And then just for him to get kind of get back into shape, you know, there's a program obviously mm -hmm. leading up to him being able to play for the first team. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so one of the, the assessments was for him to play 45 minutes in, in the reserve squad. And um, so I got to see him play, you know, right in front of me. Typically I trained with him as well. You know, he was there for the training before the game. You're on the well, pitch for them? Did you play against him? Or with so to see, him? Well, with him, but to see where, yeah, to see with him. But even then, so then he was obviously a great player, hands down. Mm -hmm. But where he's at today is just like you didn't. I mean, that it's a, it's a different level. You didn't know it. You didn't know that he didn't was be Kevin De Bruyne because with Pep Guardiola, I mean, I'm sure that incredibly helps. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. I mean, look what he did with Sterling. Sterling was. Was he had every, everything at Liverpool? He just couldn't, you know. It was the final product of, of scoring goals. Yeah. And um, after playing with the coach, you know, look where he's at, you know, today. 
Yeah. I got one more question. We're one of the best kickers in the world, and we're, we're the number 10 for, for England in the last World Cup. Oh, yeah. I got one more question. What advice do you give to someone in high school uh, to keep, to want, that wants to keep playing at higher levels? Well, that's yeah, I, I would say for all anybody, any players, you know, continue to love the game. You got to watch the game but could definitely continue to love the game. And by loving the game, I mean, you know, being able to, to talk about it, you know, not being afraid to talk about it, um, going out and playing. And it's not even like, it's just the little things of just going out and just juggling the ball. It's something so simple, yet it can be, it can be emphasized as like train, work hard, work hard. And of course that is part of the, the game plan as well. You must do that. But um, on, on times just, being able just to go out and just juggle the ball, just, again, fall in love with it because you're your own player, and when you step out on the field, everyone has their own art and their own craft, and that's what makes you you, and you just have to know that. And you, you being you and doing that, and you know, you, you bring people around you, and again, you find, find the right group of friends who also love to play the game and play with them. You know, um, continued uh, nutrition is also a big thing. There's a lot of a lot of aspects that play into the game, and um, that that that's involves with those is, is your intent. You know, you have the internet at, at your hands, and to go on and to just go in and watch these games, but to know what are the other professionals, what are they doing to maximize, you know, their potential or to get to the next level. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's... But, it's exquisite advice. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can go definitely a lot more into deep, you know, the more you train, the more you find out more about yourself and to find out more what you need to know and to, to play games, man, play games, play games, play games, yes. play games. The more games, Science. the better, you know. You, you, you got to reach out to your some coaches and, you know, get on some teams. It doesn't matter, you know, it does matter what level and hope, you know, find yourself the best environment as well for yourself and then go from there you know identify yourself in, in the position that you want to play and start and love the game <laughs> I don't even know what to say yeah, I, know you, I know you love the game and I know you love the game but um what what like so are you are you wanting to play yeah of course yeah, yeah I know you play <laughs> you play all the time Dude, it's all know, yeah right now I have a I have a what's it called a uh, what's it called tendon in my foot that from over playing and not chilling and extra like uh chilling out um i kind of inflamed it so yeah but you know i only got two more weeks of being chill and then i can go out and put it between the sticks again you know score some bangers yeah you know you gotta manage you know obviously with all the work that you're putting in you also have to put in that work when it comes to recovery. Yeah. So there's, you have ice, obviously, that, that helps. But um, to whenever you're done training, see if you can get like a lacrosse ball or, you yeah. know, some kind of foam roller and, and roll out what you need to. That's smart. And even beforehand, to, to roll your foot out on, on a lacrosse ball uh, helps out a lot. It, it, you know, allows blood flow and you know, wakes up some muscles. Yeah. I'll yeah. do that. I did not think about that, but yeah, here. Uh, well, man, it was nice talking to you. Thanks, Seth. So, <laughs> thank you, man. Appreciate it, brother. Adios. <laughs> All right, man. Good luck. Yep. Through the forest with blood on our hands, we got lost in such a foreign land where we could be free. We could be free. I'm a pagan, I'm a pilgrim, I'm a sinner, I'm a saint. I'm one of God's children that's descending from the state. We've been deceived. We've been deceived. She was the morning sun. Slowly swells in her brilliance. Slowly swells in her brilliance. Oh, I oh the taste.